all right, so it didn't like that. We need to start with one, right? Because otherwise, if yeah. we go like zero to zero, so, so it doesn't make sense. So, so let's do this again. All right, so now we have our curves. So let's plot them. And what we want to do is we want to use the same range um, here for our coefficients. And now, <laughs> ta -da -da -da, what will we see? <laughs> okay, look at that. You were right. So we're basically seeing this decreasing behavior. Sometimes when you use a bar chart, it's pld.bar, you can actually see it a lot nicer, right? So all I did here is was plt.bar. And then you see here at the different legs, you know, it's really dropping down. And in fact, in the end, it has even a, a reverse autocorrelation. Now, whether that's statistically significant or not is not something we want to uh, explore right now. So there's actually ways to explore whether these correlations are in fact statistically significant or not. And there is in fact in a Python package called stats models, there is something called ACF, which is autocorrelation function and PACF, it's called partial autocorrelation function. That basically when you, when you, when you run them, you can look at these in that manner. So, so, so you basically get a similar plot, but with a bunch of extra things. So for example, you see a, a band that tells you uh, whether your observations are statistically significant or not. Okay. But what's great to see here is this drop. And, and, and what's also interesting is when you look at the drop, you can see that, you know, it drops by, you know, approximately half and then, and then down to a quarter, you know, and then, and then less than that. It's not, not exact, but, you know, as time goes by, you see it's just, it just drops quite significantly. And um, yeah, I think, I think that's a pretty interesting behavior. And this is something that is really great to understand when you deal with time series, because in some sense or the other, that they're, they're all based on this. Now, another thing that is probably quite interesting is if we wanted to run this again, we could do something like we could add another autocorrelation. We could, for example, do something like this. Minus. And then let's just say 0 0.25. Yeah. And then what we want to do is X minus two. Yeah. So it depends on the two previous ones. Now, if we want to do this, we have to actually add another one here at the starting point because otherwise we will get an error. Yeah. So we run this again. Okay. So now we have a new autocorrelation, but now we have two autocorrelations, one with the previous and then with the next one. And they're all, and one is positive and the next one is negative, which makes it even more interesting. So when we run this, we can see, you know, we still get correlation. Uh, we run our coefficients and now look at this. This is really pretty cool. See how it oscillates like this. It just kind of goes. So this is a typical behavior. If you have a mixture of, of positive and negative autocorrelations, <laughs> you see that the first one is actually dampened by, by a certain amount because it was 0 0.5 before. But now it's, it's dampened, but then you get these, this neg, this behavior where you see there's negative autocorrelations and then a positive one again. So it's interesting how these shocks, so to speak, they, they propagate in time. And because of that, we can actually build some really, really interesting trading strategies. Okay. Do you have any questions? Yeah, like I was, I was thinking 
like because we saw that uh, that drop right like from 0 0.5 to 0 0.25 almost and so on so always 50 percent could we generalize this or is this like why why does it happen like a 50 percent drop so to say oh no no it's not a 50 percent drop it's just you see at the first like we have a an autocorrelation which is half but then when you when you just look back right that just diminish like like the effect on on the past legs just just diminishes <laughs> in a specific way and it it so happens to be 0 0.5 but but you can't easily say oh there is this the, the way it I'm, I'm sure there is some uh, mathematics behind that but i couldn't tell you exactly what that <laughs> would be right now what what's important to understand is it you know, it diminishes over time and then mm -hmm. and until it gets statistically insignificant. And, you know, the more uh, sort of backward looking autocorrelations you have, you know, the, the longer it takes until it's statistically not significant anymore. Like you see, you see here, for example, if you have two autocorrelations, you already have a much longer period where something is actually happening. But then it, it slowly peters out. So, so if, if we, if we use, say, say a hundred here, you will see that it just eventually just goes lower. So you know, we also again, have to change the range in the bar. Of course, here. <laughs> so 100. So mm. you can see, well, it's actually still, still happening here. Whether there is anything statistically significant is is probably doubtful. I, I I assume that that anything below, say, just just from a thing below zero point one is probably not really significant anymore. So we got some significance here and then here, and then maybe here. I don't know, but but that's mm -hmm. not really that great. But but anyway, it's it's interesting to see that that behavior it also depends a lot on on the volatility right so if you have these autocorrelations and your volatility is large then the significance reduces drastically <laughs> so for example if we were to to introduce some volatility let's say by uh, multiplying this by by three so now we've got a much more vol well actually uh, it's not that straightforward because you know, if we just increase the volatility, then the volatility of these next ones will increase as well. So that wouldn't really make much difference. But generally, if, if the underlying volatility is large compared to the this number here, you know, so, so what we could do is make that a lot smaller, then um, our autocorrelation will just drop off much, much quicker. And, and, and <laughs> If this obviously, if this is really, really small compared to the volatility, then it it'll just it'll just go to zero really, really fast. <laughs>